If you remember when Boris Johnson won in 2019, he said, we have simply borrowed your vote. The North, right? The Red Wall, this M25 phrase that people came up with. These working-class people who were traditional Labour voters are not represented, by the way, by the people who eat avocado in Islington. You listen to this. He says, we are from the old left. No nonsense. Call a spade a spade. Ex-lifelong Labour voters, ordinary, decent, working-class people, just scousers. Please know we have absolutely little or nothing in common with the lefty elite of today. That's what's wrong with the Labour Party by a merry mile, my friend. Well, you Sorry, keep your on views. one coming in. You can text us 87222. Start your message with the word And here's talk. a man that'll agree with me. In the studio, former Conservative advisor and businessman at Derek Lord. Derek, very morning. good morning. morning. Um, what, what went wrong yesterday, do you think, for Labour? Well, I don't think anything did go wrong. I think people's reaction to what happened yesterday is what's actually wrong, wrong about modern Britain. Because I think that um, it's not uncommon now, is it, if you look on social media, to see people that believe in conspiracy theories. They may not be your elected it, representatives, it, it, though. Well, he's not elected either. Um, so um, he's one such example of what actually is now very common in modern Britain. I think I would also say that it's really important for us to understand that 0.5% of the population of the United Kingdom identify as Jewish. And there was once upon a time, and I remember this very, very, very vividly, when it was impossible in this, dis in this country to discuss um, immigration uh, control without being described as racist. Now, you can't say anything against the state of Israel without being regarded as an anti I don't uh, understand Semite. what you're saying at all. And I, I don't... Well, my English is my first language, and it's very clear what I'm saying. Do you I'm not saying. think that there is anti-Semitism in this country? What I don't know... Uh, what do you mean you what, don't know? Well, I, I saw a video yesterday in Sainsbury's of a man with a walkie-talkie well, trying to well, convince I, people not to buy a certain product because it came from Israel. Do you want to ask the well, Jewish communities? I, I, of course there's anti-Semitism. Well, well, no, people have been telling me all my life that people are racist against black people. I've been pretty lucky. I haven't experienced uh, much of that. Um, people are telling me now, uh, by the way, uh, that um, there is widespread anti-Semitism. Only uh, last year, um, in, um, in August, mm -hmm. I think it was, the Prime Minister and the former Home Secretary stood on the same platform and they said that Britain wasn't a racist country. Now, seemingly, you can't throw a stone without it hitting something. But hold on a second, hold on a second. Hold on, can we just rewind? We're talking... Yeah. I don't know what you're saying. We're talking specifically yesterday. A man who wants to be an elected representative, a seat in Rochdale, was quoted undercover and recorded as saying, the Israelis instigated that... You're smiling at me, man. I don't no, understand. I'm not this instigated I'm... <laughs> this horrendous genocidal attack on October the 7th, where 30, 1,200 yeah. Israeli, well, Jewish men, women and children were butchered, and you're saying that anti-Semitism doesn't exist? Well... He uh, said those things. Well, he did say those things. I'm not denying... Well, that's anti-Semitism, isn't said, it? He, he said those things. Um, I'm saying that it's not peculiar these days that people believe... Well, peculiar, in... it's still wrong, well, isn't well, it? Well, let me finish. It's not peculiar these days that people believe in conspiracies. That is one such conspiracy theory. Well, no, it's a fact. A conspiracy theory is if something doesn't happen. I've just no, given you he, examples of anti-Semitism. He, he suggested in the clip that I heard that it was a deliberate policy on the part of the state of Israel to allow the attack to happen. What do you think, think of that, that statement? Well, of course it wasn't. That's my whole point. Right. You know, my whole point is, is that we actually now live in this world where conspiracy Why theories said can it? take hold Why do you think in the way that he, that he did. Well, because he is part of the 435 uh, uh, million people that belong to the Arab state. That's why. That, said that's it. certainly a point that was if, raised earlier. If the Labour Party uh, realise that there is someone who's running to be uh, elected in that seat uh, is someone who believes conspiracy theory, that's a problem that mm. could be dealt with immediately True. rather than apologised for. Would be the argument that was made yesterday, and it was made convincingly enough. And I don't, we don't know the details of the other comments that the Labour Party have been talking about. That only then, later on the day, having gone out to defend him, they've said, "We cannot support your candidacy." Could Keir Starmer have made a, a clearer decision earlier on? I don't know about that, and I'm not really concerned about the internal processes by which the Labour Party make 
uh, their decisions on these matters. All I would say, which I think is probably more important to most people, is that we live in a very diverse society where people have the right to express whatever views they like, so long as it's within the boundary of the law. And I think that's exactly what he was doing. And it was, by the way, in a private meeting, and it wasn't something that he was being, that, that he was saying publicly. And I think that there ought to be a distinction here, because I think now, um, a day is it's virtually impossible for anybody uh, to, for anybody to have a private conversation and if I repeated the private conversations I had with many of my contemporaries who are now members of the House of Lords what they said about women and what they said about black mm. people what they said about mm. gays there'd be none of them left in the House of Lords but, but he's not saying oh I do believe those things and therefore I'm going to stand as independent he profusely apologized for making those comments well, that's entirely up to him. Mm. We live in a free society. So y you go on about a free society. D final question. Whether you think it's a conspiracy theory, whether you think that, in fact, Azhar Ali was playing to a Muslim base in his constituency, to be or not to be, that is the mm. question, mm. do you think what he said was acceptable? I don't think it was right. Um, I just don't think there was any evidence for it. I try and actually work in an evidence-based way. Well, there was evidence. He was uh, recorded as saying it. No, what I'm saying is that there was no evidence for him saying what he said. I try and base my reality based on... Do you evidence. think it's the tip of the iceberg for the Labour Party, Azhar Ali? Um, in what sense? The tip that of there's the more of this out there. That the country should be concerned. That Starmer has done apparently a very good job, but actually people like Azhar Ali are still out there and could represent the next well, government. there's been a bit of a... Look, there's been a real change, I mean, in my own lifetime. In the, when I was uh, working in uh, Parliament, I mean, I think that there were many more Conservative members of Parliament that were pro-Palestine and pro-Israel. Um, so yeah. that's been a very definite uh, uh, shift in, in, in my working uh, memory. Uh, what I would say is that there is, I think, a shared collective guilt that 1945 led to 1947 stroke 48, yeah. so soon Agree that settlement that. of boundaries, and we're actually all now paying the price for that. Derek, thank you so much indeed. Could do with more time. We don't have it. Derek Lord, former Conservative advisor. Don't forget, by the way, important, uh, you can catch all the candidates who are running for election in that Rochdale constituency the 29th of February on Talk TV's website. Important. Check it out.